All right, so so let's keep going. All right, does everyone have this? Is this recording? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so from here, what we need to do, let's go ahead, features, extrude boss uh, base, and let's do that by one inch, and hit check mark. So we just have a small cylinder on the top. And then we're going to click on that cylinder itself, and spacebar normal too. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you part of the flywheel, right? You have to put something at an angle. So we have not talked about angle. We talked about smart dimension for linear distances, but we did not talk about smart dimension for angular distances. So how can we do that? Well, I'm going to again start with an x-axis for a construction line. Okay. And I'm going to position another construction line at some angle here. Notice that my construction line was not black, so I'm just going to do it again. So start from the corner here to the corner here. Still not black. OK, this is actually a good example. Um, if I click on full construction, this is a perfect example why sometimes full construction infinite is a bad idea. So I can click on just full construction without infinite, and then I can have a confined space. So from here to here, and that should create a black line. Now when you do it infinite, it's not really detecting that circle. That's why it's turning black, it's turning blue. But now notice that this blue line, I can move it in many different angles. So there's no specified angle. Now once two lines are actually cross each other, and they are not parallel or perpendicular, I can actually, when I go to Smart Dimension, and I click on the x-axis, followed by that oblique line, I can get an angle in between them. OK? Is that good? Any questions? Go ahead and position that at 45 degrees. So now what I, what I can do is I can click on a circle, and I can put that circle directly coincident with that construction line. And there you go. Now I have a circle that is positioned at an angle. Now one of the key things to specify is, OK, we have this position at an angle, but what is the diameter, and how far is this away from the center, correct? That's a very important dimension that we have to specify. So if I click on Smart Dimension, and I click on the center, OK, where is the center? I can't find the center. What happened? And how can I locate the center? Well, here's how you do it. We're going to add something called the virtual origin. OK? So over here, do you see where it says point? Do you see where it says point? We're going to click on point, and we're going to put that point on this line. So we're going to put that point on this line. Do you see it here? This point here? I just put it on this line. But in addition to that, if this point needs to be the intersection between these two, then I can click on point, hold down the control key, and click on the x-axis, and make that coincident. So now what happens, this point becomes my origin. And this answers your question if you would rather use intersection. OK, is that clear? Yeah, sure. So again, we, so I, w the whole idea of starting this is I'm, I clicked on Smart Dimension. I want to dimension how far is this point away from the origin. Well, I cannot select the origin. The origin is not there. Like I can't click on anything. I can click on a line, but that doesn't help. So I need to add something called the virtual origin. 
So I'm going to click, do you see this point here under the sketch option? It's right, right under the letter A. So I'm going to click on the point, and I'm going to put it on this line, I, either the oblique or the straight. It doesn't really matter. So if I put it here, now this is coincident with the x-axis. I want this point to also be coincident with the oblique line. So I'm going to click on it, hold down the control key, and click on the line. We're adding a relation, just like we did a second ago. And one of the options here is called Fixed. So we're going to click on Fixed. OK? So now when I go to Smart Dimension, and I click on the center of the circle, and I click on the origin, look at that. I can actually get a distance. Now, neon sign. It's going to read, there are three types of dimensions that you can put. This is called, basically, the directed projection, right? This is the right projection. But if I move my mouse a bit this way, notice that I actually get the X projection and the Y projection. So you want to make sure that you're actually dimensioning the hypotenuse of the triangle, not the X or the Y. Does that make sense? So we're going to dimension this to be 1. And let's put the diameter of this guy to be 0 0.5. Now the reason I'm mentioning all this is because on your drawing for the flywheel, you'll notice that how far is this center how far is this circle away from the center this small circle how far is it away from the center 2.5 right because the radius of this construction circle right that's just used for construction is 2.5 that means all these circles are away from the origin by 2.5 is that clear TYP by the way means typical so I would totally ignore it um, another thing that you have to kind of think about is over here, do you see where it says 0 0.45 times 2? Right? We covered that in the first lecture. That means this circle here and this circle here are 0 0.45. Now, I usually don't give you this hint, and I expect you to figure it out on your own. But the hole over here is a different size than the hole over here. Okay? The hole over here is different than the hole over here. So they're not both 0 0.5. So make sure you know which one is which. How can you tell from the drawing? That's what you have to figure out. Okay. No, I don't see that. Well, if it's not, you're looking at the right, look at the different view. You see it? Great. OK. So now I have this circle here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this by extrude cut. I'm going to cut this by one inch. <coughs> so I just cut that by one inch. How big is that small circle? I think I put 0.5. Now the deal is, do I really have to go back and do this four times? Not to mention eight times for the bigger circles. That's just going to be annoying. So what happens if I do this? And I'm going <coughs> to, by the way, everyone should know how to edit a sketch now, right? I just click on the plus sign here, right click, edit sketch, so I go back in, right? So let's say there's another big circle here. I'm just going to put it somewhere here just to simu simulate the flywheel. So now I have two cuts. But I want to repeat those. So what do I do? I'm going to click on that cut. OK, so I'm selecting both of them. Hold down the Control key, and I'm going to select the circumference of the circle. OK? So notice what I selected. From here, it says Cut Extrude 2. Hold down the control key and click on the circumference. Now I'm going to come to under the features tab. Do you see where it says linear pattern? We're going to click on the drop down menu and there's an option called circular pattern. So we're going to click on that. Oh, look at that. The yellow actually represents a preview. Over here, you can specify how many you want of them, and if you want equal spacing. So let's say I only want three. Notice how it's equally spaced. Or I want more. Okay? 
So for us, we want four, and again, can ch hit check mark. Ta da! They're all done. Is that clear for everyone? One more time. Yes. So I'm going to, let's say you didn't click on this. Let, let's go kind of through the traditional process so I explain to you how SOLIDWORKS is thinking. We're going to click on the drop down menu under linear pattern. And we're going to select circular pattern. OK? The first question that it asked me here, do you see those circles? Yeah. The first question it asked me is, what is the circumference? Or what is the circle that you want to create this pattern about? So that's where I select the outer edge. OK? Then it tells me here on the bottom, features to pattern. So exactly what do you want to copy? Well, I can't really click on those circles both at one time. So what I can do is I can click on the plus sign here. You see that plus sign here? I can click on it and that will give me the design feature tree again. So I can say, oh, cut extrude 2 is the one that I need. So I can click on it and there we go. Okay, so it takes that and it patterns it over as many times as you want. Is that good? And then I click check mark. I'm going to give you a hint on how to do that small notch. So here's how, this is just a hint, OK? When you, when you draw your circle, OK, and you're going to start with a rectangle after that, you're going to make sure that the first vertex of the rectangle is starting from the circumference of the circle. So circle, rectangle, I'm going to start from the circumference. and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Now, I want to make sure that this other vertex is also coincident with a, with a circumference. So I'm going to click on this point, hold down the control key, click on the circumference, and make sure that this also is coincident. OK? Then I'm going to go my, and do my dimensioning process. So from here to here, it's 0.22. From here to here, it's 0.4, right? This guy is 0 0.25. And from here to here, it's going to tell me, hey, this is too much because it's already balanced. So I'm, I'm saying, OK, I'm good. And then I can go to Trim Entities, and I can clean it up. Now what happens, notice what happens. Notice where this 0 0.22 went. Trim Entities, boom, 0 0.22 disappeared. The reason for that is that 0 0.22 was dependent on a line here that we cut. But nothing changed. All I have to do is I have to reinforce the SOLIDWORKS that yes, from here to here, it's 0 0.22. But now I also have this side too. So from here to here, it's also 0 0.22. Or you can add a relation between those two points and make sure that they're horizontal. OK, so just a hint for you. Any questions? Is this good? OK, let's go to this side. And I want you to draw the construction line again, but I just want you to draw the x-axis, uh, sorry, the y-axis. OK? Now, let's just draw some sort of a shape here. Let's just draw a rectangle. I'm basically destroying any chance of you using this part to be your engine base. OK, are we good? Spacebar normal, too. Guys, the key thing when you for the first two weeks in this program, you have to spend a lot of time. OK, just sit there, play around. Click a couple of buttons, 
get things wrong, control Z, it's okay. That's the only way you can learn. If you're not going to put your best work forward, so to speak, when it comes to do the design project, no one really wants to team up with you. Okay, so make sure that you're pretty good at this because we're going to try to do it faster. Okay, I'm not expecting like you do it right now because this is still the first week or second week, so to speak, but you know, make sure that you're doing the practice at home. So when I tell you do the tutorial, you actually do it. Okay, so from here, I want to copy this guy over to this side. So all I have to do is I'm going to go to Mirror Entities. And the first question it asked me, what do you want to mirror? So I'm going to say I'm going to click on this line, this line, this line, and this line. Although it's a rectangle, every line is created separately. Okay? And then the second question asked me, what do you want to mirror it about? Well, this looks like a good line to mirror about. So I'm going to click on that line. So make sure, let me go back and, and show you what I just did. Mirror entities, the first option, I have to make sure my box is blue. That's how I know I'm selecting it. So boom, 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 boom. Okay. Now, if I want to select the line I want to mirror about, I have to click on mirror about so that box becomes blue. And then I click on this line and notice how it gets copied over to the other side. Now consider that they're mirror images. Any change that you do to this guy is going to happen to this guy too. Okay? So that's another th key thing that you can think about. So if you didn't like the circular pattern that I just showed you a second ago, for your flywheel, you can create one here, copy it over, one here, copy it over, right? That's a possibility. You can create one of these, copy it over, and then copy both of them down. That's another possibility. It's up to you. Okay? I just want to bring it to your attention that the flywheel actually has three disks. So one, two, three. A big disk, a, a smaller disk inside of it, and a bigger, bigger disk after that. Smaller disk. Okay? Is that clear? What's your question? Okay. Uh, is, there, is there any question on this before I do the circle pattern? Yeah. Hit escape, exit from sketch, and do it again. Click on that purple arrow on the top, and then click on the plane and go to the process again. Okay, let me do the circular pattern one more time. So the circular pattern, I want to take these two and I want to mirror them up, uh, around this arc. So I want this arc as my main line, right? I hold down the control key and I want these two circles and over here I'm calling them cut extrude two. Okay, so I click on that. So notice I have both of them selected. The, the arc, not the arc, the circumference and those features. And then I'm going to go to features. So the features tab, not the sketch tab. Click on the drop down menu under linear pattern and select circular pattern. Okay, so if I click on circular pattern, there we go. This one? No, the one down. Okay, I, I just drew it. I, I, don't ca I didn't care. I just drew something, I didn't dimension it. Weston, are you good? Those are the ones that you actually just cut. I'm coming over. Hold on. Well, my number could be different than your number because I'm deleting a lot.
guys having fun? I bet you are. You don't have to answer. I bet you are having fun. I can just see it in your eyes. <laughs> okay? Any questions? So, now comes the part of, okay, how do we turn this stuff in? So, if I tell you I want an isosolid, then we have to go to isometric view, which is this view. Okay, we do not do a print screen. We're going to go to file, uh, sorry, we're going to go to view, screen capture, image capture. Okay, is that clear? So we do not hit print screen. So I'm going to put in isometric, so this is ISO solid. Okay, ISO solid. So we're going to go to view, Screen capture, image capture. Now, SOLIDWORKS already took a screenshot, and it saved it. Now, where do you bring it in? Well, we're going to open up a Word document. OK? And we're going to double click on this, and we're going to put name, your name, not my name, ECE 103. And if you're the morning class, you'll put AM. If you're the, morning if you're the night class, you'll put PM. And this would be SOLIDWORKS. Homework number one. So make sure this is in the header, not on its own. So double click and like an empty space here in the header, and you can see it. Okay? Now, if you hit Control V or right click paste, you will bring in the picture that you just took a screenshot of. So this is just too much space. So I'm going to shrink it down to four. Notice how I did it. I grabbed this corner. So this is actually, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not really picky about stuff, but this is something I'm really picky about. Do not do this. So look, look on the board. Do not do this. OK, and try to fit things. That is not good. You click on the corner here, and you just keep bringing it in until, until the edges are kind of like half. Do you see how the vertex here is like on the midpoint? Perfect, now it's half. And you bring in the second problem, the third problem, and the fourth problem, and so on. Now again, this is many different problems. They're not the same problem created in the collage format. Okay? These are different problems. So, what is your homework for next time? And by next time, I mean... Sure, you want to do it Wednesday? Sure. Now let's do it Monday. Um, but the deal is, on Wednesday, I will continue lecturing and I will add to it. So by Monday, we'll have all the parts completed. Does that make sense? 
Oh, no. <laughs> you're being optimistic now. OK, so one, you're doing the tutorial of getting um, started introduction to SOLIDWORKS, Monday. So this is due Monday, a week from today, the 30th. Just a heads up, this is not, it, this is not only the, the homework problems for Monday. On Wednesday, I'll continue lecturing and we'll finish the rest. Does that make sense? This is like homework 1A. Okay, and, and Wednesday we'll do homework 1B. Okay, and I have this recorded on tape, so do not tell me that I did not say that in class. <laughs> okay, so tutorial 1, getting started, introduction to SOLIDWORKS. Tutorial, getting started, lesson 1 parts, engine pin, flywheel, base. Okay? What we will be covering on Wednesday, so in addition to this, we will be talking about the engine head, the connecting rod, And uh, I lost it. Piston. Sorry. Okay. So those will be covered on Wednesday. Okay. In addition to the crankshaft, which I will not cover in class, but I will share a video for you, and you have to do the video. Okay, so this will be watch video. So by Monday, January 30th, we would have finished all the parts for the engine. Then we can move forward into bringing it all together in order to simulate it. Did I show you guys the video of the simulation? Yeah. Okay, good. Any question on that? Okay, so the rest of the time, it's 8.30. That means we have 30 more minutes. The rest of the time, what are we going to do? Who said play? <laughs> yeah, keep playing and we'll see you next semester here. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to try to finish at least those two tutorials if you haven't finished them. Okay? If you finished those already, please go ahead and finish those. Okay? Now, if you finished all of them, great job. What I would recommend to you is uh, let me know and I'll show you how to get maybe a head start on the other parts. Okay? Now, I just go to Blackboard, and you can see everything there. Although it's broken up like homework one, homework two, it's combined now, OK? Because we started kind of like a week off, and I want to make sure that we're catching up. So I'm hoping that toward the end of every class, I give you about 30 minutes to kind of like lap time for you to kind of work and finish everything. OK, any questions? Yeah. Good, good question. If you were doing it, most likely it was in inches because that's the standard. Uh, but the deal is if you design a part and you added one feature without checking units, you can go back and change it, but it won't translate. So for example, let's say you, know, you put one inch, you put one, but, or let's say you put 2.54 to make it easy, but you thought you were saying inches, but it was really centimeters, then when you go in and change it to inches, it will be just one inch. It won't be 2.54 inches. So yeah, it will, it, will, it will convert the units, but it will not kind of copy them over. Is there a way to okay. the entire thing? Sorry, what? Is there a way to the entire thing? Okay. Sorry. Yeah.